a new technique in NX9 to update meshes is morphing. Traditionally, uh, an update will remesh your, uh, your parts, so nodes, labels, positions are, uh, are not uh, the same after an update. Mesh morphing will only move the nodes uh, where uh, faces are moved and relative will, will move adjacent, uh, a group of adjacent or close by elements with them. But labels the topology in general will uh, will stay the, the same so if you define something on uh, on a node label uh, that all will uh, will uh, maintain his uh, associativity like for example boundary conditions that you would define on the node now it can also in some cases be faster than remeshing everything now, uh, I got a few examples to illustrate this, uh, this new uh, morphing and one of them is this, this part linked to, uh, linked to geometry. And let's uh, make the geometry the work part and uh, we'll modify uh, a bit this geometry by pulling a face. So I'm going to pull uh, this face and all the symmetric faces that we have also in the part and also the chamfer. So I end up with those eight faces that we're going to pull up a bit, uh, in our case 2.5 uh, millimeters. So now that geometry is, uh, is changed. We're also going to change the position, position of the hole uh, over here. So I'm going not only select that single face, but let's uh, put a selection on, uh, on pockets. So this face and its symmetric part and also this one and the symmetric. So also the hole over here is, uh, is selected. And I want to drag them to the inside, well, maybe also 2.5 uh, millimeters or maybe two millimeters. Okay, so I made uh, a few changes to the, to the part. And like we explained normally, the part would, would remesh, etc. And it's not fully guaranteed that uh, that all the mesh shapes will be the will be the same and certainly the labels will be totally totally different and now i want to show you the automatic morph and the automatic morph can be applied when there's no change in in number of faces etc so so really uh, here only the position of faces and edges are are changed not the number of, of edges and, and faces. Okay, you see, still see the original uh, the original mesh, and here we got uh, the morphing commands. Commands. One of them is automatic morphing, where we can select our uh, our mesh to be to be morphed. But before we we going to morph the 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 mesh towards a new position, you can check the associated node. So if I select this top face. And I take a look here, you see in blue all the edge nodes with the circle one, it are the ones on the vertex. And in the middle you see the purple ones which are related to, uh, to a face as is indicated uh, over here. So you see that the nodes here will come to that, uh, that position. The same over here if we take a look for example at our inside, uh, inside face. And we display again the notes, you see that this is related to those, uh, to those notes. So we're going to select our mesh to, uh, to, be, to be morphed. And if you want to, you can do a, a preview. And immediately you're going to, to see that the, the elements are all moving, but the shape stays the same. And also, if you would check labels, these all would be, be the same. Let me undo the, the visualization and let me generate it again while we're looking at this, this position. So also here you'll see uh, that now everything will be dragged upwards, but the general shape is, uh, is maintained. Notice the, these three elements, they are stretched because here there's an edge and the bottom the bottom elements 
are restrained to the edge we are here already have. Another example of, uh, of morphing is this one. So somebody paid uh, some uh, close attention to the mesh, made a nice, uh, a nice brick, uh, brick mesh, but somehow he, he deleted the, the cut model, or the cut model is not linked anymore to the, to the geometry. Well, this offers us also the possibility to relink geometry. So if I say, let me import my, uh, let me import a, a file. So let me go to my, uh, to my morphing example. So I got here the geometry of this part and there's no link between geometry and, and meshes. One of the things we, we can do now is within the morphing, say I want to associate and disassociate. So here I want to associate, I want to associate this mesh with this body. And here you can set up the tolerance and this, this tolerance will be used to, uh, to indicate what is related to, uh, to what, so what nodes to what, which uh, faces and, uh, and edges. So if we take a look after the association is, uh, is done to the display of the association, we can show um, orphan nodes, but there are none. And if I select the face, and I show the association, you see here clearly the purple and the blue indications of purple as nodes on face, blue as nodes on, on, on edges, and here we got a circle indicated that it's related to a vertex. So the nice thing is now if I move that geometry, that all nodes will follow and my total mesh will be morphed towards a new position. So I'm going to do something with this, uh, this face, this hole. I want also to do something with the inside, the top face, etc. So again, here I can take a look whether my nodes are correctly associated. And when they are, I can continue. Before I, I do so, I got another example here of uh, uh, a mesh representing a part of a, of a ship. And then uh, one use case could, uh, could, for example, be that somebody meshed half of, uh, half of this, uh, this model and paid a lot of attention and work on this, uh, on this, uh, this mesh, but doesn't want to do that on the, the other side. So, what you typically would uh, would then do is uh, is just copy your your mesh or better said reflect your mesh to the other side to the symmetric side so i got all my uh, if i'm correct yeah got all my um, my meshes and i'll reflect them using the um, the x uh, xz plane so now I got my symmetric uh, symmetric model. I can merge my uh, merge my nodes if I want to. So here I can go to uh, duplicate uh, duplicate nodes. Here are all my my duplicate nodes within my uh, within my tolerance, and I can say merge uh, merge them and keep my uh, my lower labels. Okay, these are from the left side. Okay, so my mer nodes are merged, and there's no more uh, merged to, uh, nodes to be uh, to be merged. Okay, now I end up with, with geometry on the right hand side, or a mesh on the right hand side without any geometry attached to it. So later on, if I would like to define boundary conditions based on geometry, I'm going to have an issue because I cannot select. Uh, geometry. Obviously, we got the smart selectors to to even easily select uh, select uh, element edges and 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 faces for crashes and loads, etc. But if you want geometry, what you always can do is again use the association of of the morphing command. So in this part, I already mirrored my geometry. So at the other side here. If I take a look, I got uh, also on the other side geometry. Let me just 
uh, show all the geometry, okay. So what I uh, what I can do now is say I want to associate again uh, nodes on the right hand side here or meshes to on the right hand side to my uh, to my geometry. So I select my uh, my meshes. I select all my geometry. So in that case, more than 3,000 uh, faces, and it's a, it's a big model, it's, it's a ship, so my, I put my tolerance a bit, a bit higher. And now the association is, is going on. That's going to take a few minutes, so while that's, uh, that's uh, creating the association, I can go back in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, model where we already did this uh, association. And let me uh, activate the the cut file, and I, I just I don't want to see sheets and and curves. Okay, so we can start to uh, to modify that part. For example, make this a bit a bit thicker. Let's do five mil. And here it's already a bit extreme because we go from 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 this edge to here so that's already a quite quite important difference we're going to see that afterwards in the second uh, in the second step i want to make this also a bit a bit bigger and slide it up, slide it a bit to that position we can uh, we can do some uh, some more changes let me uh, resize resize a hole For example, say this hole is not longer 63, but 60, for example. And we're going to offset also, for example, the, the inside tangent uh, faces of all this. And let us do both. Okay, so I did multiple, uh, multiple uh, changes. And again, remember this mesh was not linked to the original geometry, so we re-linked everything, and now we can go to uh, again to the fem file and to apply our uh, our morphing. So I can use the automatic morph because everything is is linked uh, linked together, and say morph me all of uh, all of this, and say uh, say okay. So at this point again all nodes and elements are repositioned and proportionally internally all nodes and elements will be moved uh, accordingly. So you see now everything is linked to the new or updated to the new position. Here it's a bit extreme because here I end up with elements squeezed and here stretched. And then you could start to, uh, to remove some, some edges. And also use the manual morph command where you really could got, op got options to say which elements you want to morph from where to what etc. Et last example on uh, on the uh, last modification on um, on this uh, this part is for example here and uh, let's uh, let's resize those uh, those faces. So let's resize the, the faces we, oop. let me select it here, resize, resize the faces over here. So these are 50, but I want to make a more important change, for example, make them, uh, make them uh, 40. And now uh, we can take a look at the, the, the morphing on the two holes. So again here. Go to automatic morph, select the mesh, do a preview or click OK. There's some different uh, methods which you can, can apply. And you see here the elements now moving to the new position. Now, in the meantime, I suppose the other part is, is ready. So here, we did our uh, reassociation. 
and let us check check how uh, how successful it it was. So I got association. I can now show the, um, the orphan nodes. Yeah, there's 29 left on the complete model, and if we zoom in, yeah, there's one here. So probably, yeah, it was not sure with the tolerances what uh, what to do. So you're going to also here. So you end up with a few a few nodes, but most of them are, are fully linked to the geometry here. There's another some other that you can see. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, this is also now uh, now finished. Another way to uh, to see it is, for example, if you create a, a new group, and I would say a group of related uh, related elements. Uh, related elements to uh, to this face. Uh, see the elements highlighting, so only. I got those those elements. So you see that there's now a link between faces and uh, and elements.